Duel Review is brought to you by SpiderWolf.com. On today's Duel Review, it's Escape the Curse of the Temple. I'm RJ. And I'm Nick. Let's get to it. Yeah. <laughs> Hey everybody, today is August the 28th and we're taking a look at Escape, the Curse of the Temple. Yes, the Curse of the Temple. Kind of a bland subtitle, but that's what it's called, Curse of the Temple. I apologize for the green screen thing, hole in my chest, sorry. Yeah, there's a whole lot of green there and you probably won't see it. Yeah. Anyways. It'll be blue because of the background. Right. Um, so so uh, it came out in 2012, there, there was a, uh, there was a uh, Kickstarter to get a little more following. It was designed by Christian Amundsen Ostby. Uh, it's one to five expansion. players, except for the expansion, which adds a sixth player. Um, and, uh, and basically, the premise is, is that you're inside this temple, the cursed, the cursed, the cursed temple, uh, and you want to get these gemstones activated so that you can leave the temple before time runs out. And that's the big thing: is that it's all on this time where you have three minute intervals and you have three three minute intervals. So the game literally takes nine minutes. Well, well nine plus. So, so it, it is ten. Set up. It's 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 ten minutes. That is it. Yep. And Every then, game will be the same. Right. Uh, and so you have to filter through. You have Real to get time. these tiles. Um, so you start off on the, the first tile, which is here. This is your starting tile. Everyone starts off in this room in the center. And then you put two tiles there to start off the game. Yeah, they've, then, they've kind of gone with the premise of you've been in this temple or whatever, but now you've, like, activated or angered it or whatever. Right. So now you, you stepped on this little foot plate or yeah, something. So you have to keep going back to the safe room. So this is the safe room. This is very important, integral. That's where you start. Right, because then doors close. So the, fir the first interval is you go out, you try and, you know, open up doorways because the uh, the exit is right in the middle of your entire deck, which is over there. Actually, it's only in the middle for when you're playing two-player. Uh. When you play four or more, like we have, uh, it goes into the last four, randomly shuffled in order of the last four. So there are six kind of standard tiles, and then there are 13, uh, you know, bigger and better tiles. And if you have the expansion, those would involve curses and treasures and yada yada. So we'll kind of get to that. Why don't we grab some meeples there? Some meeples? Yeah, and, and put us... So there's one for each of us. Okay, I will be red, and you can be blue. Okay. Why don't you be blue, and I'll be red? Okay, please. I'll be blue, and you be red. We should be green. Because that'll work for the green screen. Okay, so you have these little uh, little place markers just so people know who you are, and it, it will it will matter, especially when you're playing with larger groups, because you can only help out people in your same vicinity unless you have certain characters, which we'll kind of get to in a while. But the core game does not have characters; it just has our little little representations here, and uh, we start in the center. Um, you shuffle the big deck of of uh, tiles, you put them out, and then you draw. You know, one here, line it up, and one here, line it up. Hit the soundtrack, which you can download on your iPhone like mine. And it, it's kind of this, you know, ooh, oh, you know, kind of thing. The, the first one also came with a CD, and sorry about the green. Or it has a CD. It has a CD, but you also, the, the expansion also came with an egg timer, and each egg timer is three minutes. So you just do three minutes, flip, three minutes, flip, three minutes, flip. Oh, we're going to listen to the soothing sound. Yeah, it's just kind of, it starts with escape. And then you immediately start rolling your dice. So you're just sitting here trying to roll your dice, trying not to get black masks. And it's trying to give some ambiance, you know. And um, so each one of these tiles has a different requirement in order to get into it. Right. Um, most of them have a torch and a running man. So in order to get into that, I need to roll a torch and a running man. I already rolled two black dice. So that <laughs> freaking sucks. You got that? So you're going to move in? Yep. I got a gold mask, so I get to two black masks back. Um, I have a key and a dupe that doesn't help. I still need that torch. Uh, I got a black mask again, but I still need that torch. I got two black masks. I still need that freaking torch. Why are you going that way? I need help. So stupid. Where? The... Oh, okay, good. Okay, so I'm gonna go yeah. with you because otherwise I'm gonna get screwed. Okay. If you have a gold mask, let me know. Now I, we're in the same vicinity, so if he rolls a gold mask and doesn't have black mask, you want to take? I can use him to get my ma black mask back, which is probably gonna be gold helpful mask. here. Okay, good, because I almost locked out. Yeah, oh, dude, see that happens a lot. That's that's one of my complaints is that you get black mass an awful freaking lot, or at least I do. Okay. I don't know if I just have the magic touch or what. On this tile, uh, it has a gemstone and then a, a requirement for that gemstone, which has four uh, uh, 
keys. I just got four keys. So now this is your gemstone pile, which comes in hand, which uh, it gets explained later. This gemstone is activated, so I'm putting that there to indicate that it's so, activated. So yeah, it comes out of the, the cache here, which is right. a good thing. Um, so I got two running dudes. So since we're in here, I'm going to use this to grab another tile. I have two gold to, masks. To place a tile, you need to have another running dude. So I'm going to do that, and I'm going to flip it over. And oh, geez, it's the, the secret uh, gem room. So this one goes into place, and this is an either-or situation. Right. If, we, if we're lucky enough to get... Seven keys, then we can unlock two gems. So yeah, that bad barrel. <clears throat> so he got a gold. I'm gonna take two back. I still have one black. I had, I had two gold, so okay. I'm taking the other. All one. right, all right. Uh, well, that one would have been still black. Uh, look at that. So yeah, I'm looking for keys. I only got oh, one I so got far. Two keys. Oh, we need to get in there first. Oh yeah, There's you're the running right. man. So boom, I'm in there, and uh, got a gold mask. So I get that back. And here's that, and it's oh, just I'm in. this is the way it kind of continues. So no, we're I'm just right, looking so. for keys no, no, now. No. Just need as many as possible. Uh, I got one key. You got a key yet? I got, I two, got keys. two keys. Okay, so that's four. So we could get one, we but let's get go for one. seven. Okay. Uh, uh, there's three, three keys. black masks, so I can't help. Uh, two black masks. I have three keys. You have yeah, two so keys. Yeah, so we'll just take that one. Okay. And then keep rolling here. So we activate another one, and that that room is now tapped. You can't do ult multiple. You just right. do one. So I got a gold. So I'm taking two back, and we're gonna try oh, searching for another okay, room. Okay, I just maybe. got another room. Got a gold. Okay, so the last room Ooh. that we have out. Uh, this one is a hidden room. So now there's this chamber that has two gems, but it's it's separated. It's separated by a wall. So we're gonna have to actually go around in order to get to that. So we're listening. Oh, oh, there's the first gong. So that so gives us warning that we need to get back because it's 30 seconds until whatever. So we have to be in the safe room when the door closes or we're screwed. So I have we four better black go. Masks. Okay, I've got a gold, so you take two. See, I'm, this time I'm choosing to let him, even though I have a black mask, I'm letting him take two back. And you can only do that when you're in the same room. <clears throat> yeah, right. So unless you have a certain character. Oh, which there you go, to. I got a gold. Got keys. Well, we need yeah, I'm I'm torch and a dude. I'm out. Uh, I okay, I need to have a key and a dude. Oh, I got, oh, I got two gold blasts. You need, oh, no. I'm out. Okay. Uh, so what do I need? Okay, oh, heartbeat. We need one. to hurry up. Uh, so I need a freaking... Uh, need a key, need a key. I got, got a, it. I got a key. Yeah, me too. Okay, so we're safe. And here comes the... Boom! Door slam. Door slam. And if you're not there, then you lose a die. And the soundtrack continues, so we immediately go to round two, and it does pretty much the same thing, and then right. round three, and at the end of round three, if you're not through the entrance, um, then you lose. Like, if even one of you stays behind or gets trapped, then all of you lose. It's a purely cooperative game. Um, so that that's the way it is. Now, uh, the, the exit tile, once we were lucky enough to, to grab that... Um, it has a key to remaining gem in the pool ratio. So right. if we aren't able to activate enough gems, it might be very difficult for us. Because we'd have to roll that many keys. So essentially whatever's in here, right now we have five gems still in the, the pool. We would have to roll five keys between us in order to get out. Right, all at one time. Or, well, yeah, accumulatively. But uh, Okay, so... These are kind of the standard tiles. We didn't really draw enough tiles. The, the game would be normally much bigger than this. Uh, even with two player, it would be uh, several more rooms. Uh, we've got some expansion tiles that we wanted to show you. Uh, these are cursed rooms. I mean, they have this black mask when it comes up. You draw a curse card. And I've got a couple of representations of that here. They're just represented here. And uh, just one stack is just shuffled. And if you draw a room with a curse... Oh, sorry. I didn't know that you were prompting me. That one actually has a treasure as well, so we're going to take from this treasure uh, pile here and just randomly put one down. Ba boom And you need two keys in order to get this treasure, and you get another um, you gem. Get, oh, that one is a gem. Yeah. Uh, there's also uh, there's a hidden doorway that you might be able to unlock and put between a room that has no door you know, between them, so right. that's nice. You have a teleport, which you can, you know, if someone's in need, you can get them to you quicker. Or you can get ones that are actually worth keys. Like this one's worth keys. You have one that's worth torches. That helps out at the end of one That time. sort of thing. So yes, um, treasures can be nice for sure. Uh, the curse, though, I have to draw that first. And in fact, when the room is discovered, uh, this curse is going to... So let's say we're here and we're discovering this room. The curse comes out immediately. This one is... Uh, die is lost. So the die is lost until you remove this curse. And the, the curse is three torches. So we have a curse now on whoever discovered the tile. So I guess it was me. And that kind of sucks because I already got two black masks. So I'm going to try to get three. He's with me though, so he can help me lift the curse. 
I got a gold, so I get that back, but I still have no... I need three torches. I got one, two torches. I have a, I have a gold mask. Okay, thank you. I got three torches, so that is gone now. Okay. So you don't have to worry about that. Oh, actually, I was supposed to lose a dice, so that would have been harder for me to do. Well, anyway, we did. we did it, and I got the dice back, so now I can continue, um, so on and so forth. That's what curse rooms do. There's right. a whole bunch of different types of curses. This one makes you forces you to lose a treasure. So if you've accumulated a treasure, you draw this, treasure's now gone, doesn't help you. So if I had two keys I was saving for a rainy day, it's now gone. Uh, there's also one where you're trapped in this room. I'm surrounded by snakes. So I have to get rid of this curse before I can traverse the room to the next room. Right. This one's interesting, and this comes into play with characters, and we'll get to that maybe right now. Um, this one makes you swap characters, like swap personas. It's like the Freaky Friday kind of curse, which is kind of can be fun. Um, the the characters again are an expansion, so it, they're not in the core game. Right. So there's six characters that you can choose from, and each one has a certain has uh, two tiles which have two abilities. The uh, the one with a solid um, is this a good representation of that? Well, the the one box side. Yeah, the, the one the one the one box, and I don't know how well you can see that. Don't but there's a, worry about it. Yeah. A single box here uh, that indicates a permanent move that you can always do. Whereas the one with two boxes shown here, one box, two box, uh, is one that you can only do once every three minutes. You know, so you have yeah, I would call them acts. Yeah. Every act. Right. So when before the door slams, between the escape and when the door slams. You can use it once. And everyone's are fairly different, um, you know, to, to help everyone out. Um, yeah, the adventurer is able to, her one-time use is she can jump up to three rooms if she rolls three little running right. adventurers, which is really handy because she can scoot really quick. She's a discoverer. Her permanent uh, ability is awesome because when she's drawing a new tile, she can look at one and if she doesn't like it, she can put it on the bottom of the deck and draw the next one. Of course, you have to take that one, but it's still... If, if it's empty or if it's a curse room, you know, you have a chance yeah. of getting past. Um, real quickly, uh, since you brought up other tiles, we forgot to mention this tile, which this one has a curse, and I think most of the ones with the greenbacks do, um, and, and hopefully you guys can see this okay. Um, but basically, this one comes into play, but when the door shuts and you're supposed to be here, these vanish, which means that if there's a gap, let's say that this one was here. Da -da -da. Let's put that one there, and that doesn't make any sense, so let's do it this way. And we're here. So if this one's here and the door shuts, and let's just say we're here for, for the sake of it. Uh, uh, let's say we're here, actually. This one goes away and doesn't ever come back, which means that there's a gap, which means that we have to rediscover this room. So it's more like if you've ever seen that movie, uh, was it Cubed? Or Cube? Uh, the Cube? Is that what it's called? The uh, whatever. So, so they just constantly shift uh, rooms. So that's pretty interesting. Uh, there's also task rooms. Yes. You have this little token in mixed in with the gem pool there uh, so when you accomplish one of these task rooms then that gets moved off you cannot escape until you accomplish the number of tasks you've decided to put in there um, so we're gonna say you can have one to three is usually what they recommend we're gonna say there's three and we're just gonna randomly take you know three of these tiles and mix them in with all the other tiles so when they come up uh, we better accomplish them and we better find them too because if we don't find them we're gonna get stuck and then whatever so it does definitely ramp up the difficulty uh, so this one, this is the altar. We sacrifice die, and that sucks because they're gone forever. To sacrifice two in order to accomplish this, it doesn't have to be done at one time or by one person. Uh, if I can sacrifice one die, then somebody else could come next round and sacrifice another die, say. Uh, we have this one, which uh, basically you take random tasks from an allotment and put them on here. And you have to count, I think it's four, and you have to accomplish each four right. in order to get this. So it's kind of like a marathon of little mini mini challenges. Uh, we've got this one, which, this one's interesting because when it comes out, it you have to border it. You have to surround it in order to get these little little gem obelisk things in place. So I literally, ha we'd have to go out here, we'd have to journey all the way around and back in order to complete this. So we have to set rooms all the way around it. Um, this one is the ghost. So when this comes out, we got this little ghost character, and he's going to be put into the safe room. And then we're going to have to push him all the way to wherever this spawns. Um, With uh, And every time you do that, you have to spend two flames, and then if yeah. you want to get in the room, you have to spend the actual yeah, thing. Yeah, two torches in addition to whatever it costs to do the, the room. And then you to get in. There's a tree of life as well, uh, which this one... You need to roll gold masks, you know, equal in order to the to, number of players. So if there's four players times between, two, yeah, between you, you have to roll eight gold masks. So, so you're trying to bring that back to life. So these definitely ramp up the difficulty, and it also adds another layer of you need to do 
think about, you know, you don't just want to randomly go to, to that direction as far as you can go because that makes it more difficult if you can try to loop around, you know, and then more people can do pincer attacks and all that stuff. So, so there is a lot of added challenge with the expansions. There's one last one. It's, you know, the obligatory chalice uh, that you must find. And, um, yeah, that would actually would never connect with it. Anyway, no, no. it doesn't matter. We're, we're not doing it. We're trying to trying our best here. But uh, this one you actually have to carry with you. And it, it, every room you have to do it again and again. It's almost like the, the, the ghost, the ghost in a sense. Push it. Um, but you need to get this out. Otherwise, you're in trouble. So, so again, a lot of added possibilities there. So how do we feel about it? Is there anything else that we missed? Um, I, we didn't really talk about how... Everybody's rolling at the same time. Yes. As you saw, right. we're just so always we're just rolling just, yeah. and black dice. And so there is definitely a lot of... You have to trust who you're playing with. Right. But there's also a lot of mistakes that you kind of make. Yes. Because, yeah, you know... This, you, is, this is very big on mistakes. One of the biggest mistakes that we have is you're so focused on accomplishing the, uh, the task and focusing on what you roll and trying to do it quickly that you often miss even even as big as they are you miss the uh the uh the the, the curses that come up and you're just like oh i missed that what do i do you know and yeah you, you forgot to draw a curse card or whatever or somebody else did it before and you didn't re i don't know plus and, i'm sorry no go ahead plus since you're you're rolling so fast you kind of you for, you forget what you use things for so let's say i use these two um, to do that, but I didn't push it aside because I'm rolling so fast, and this one gets this one back, so this one's used. So now I only have one left that I can maybe save for later, but sometimes you just forget, and you just kind of roll them all, and you're like, oh, I had a, now I don't have that key anymore. Shoot. Right. Yeah. So, so it can definitely be fun in the sense of, you know, you're always doing something. Right. You, you are working collaboratively, but you're working, uh, you know, apart as well. You're just trying to do the best you can. If you get locked with all black dice, which has happened quite a few times, like yeah. every time we play, at least I actually at think least that one they're person weighted. Does. Yeah, at least one person does every time we we do it. Um, you really need to have help, otherwise you're kind of SOL. If you are stuck outside the safe room uh, at the end of the little boom, boom the the thing ends, yeah, or the or the close. timer runs out. If you're yeah. deciding to do the egg timer, which is supplied in one of the expansions, Thanks, you lose a die. Just that's it. It's unceremonious. You just lose a die, and so now it's even harder. Uh, to, to accomplish your goals, so you really need some help. Um, so yes, um, it can be interesting. I think it actually sounds more interesting than it actually is. Yeah. I think it's fun for, for someone who doesn't really want complicated rules. I guess that's kind of nice, but there's so much room for error because because you're all you know, kind of frantic. And so it's just it's kind of one of those things, if you like rolling dice and you like the kind of the fun little uh, uh, music, that's going along and you kind of enjoy that and maybe collaborating and you decide to go the same way but it really leaves very little time for strategy so if you haven't set it up in the beginning and follow to the letter what you said you were going to do yeah it's just kind of every man for himself and more often than not you'll be talking but nobody else will be listening because they're just concentrating their own dice so it does have its problems but i applaud the effort i think it's a neat you know, idea, and it's a it's a new game that I've ever seen. I've never seen anything quite like this. Um, and I think the expansion is also kind of overwhelmed. This was a lot of uh, Kickstarter stuff. We got this game from our friend Theron again. Thank, Thank you, you, Theron. And uh, he had gotten a lot of the little mini expansions, all that stuff. So playing with all of them at once, we can't resist doing that, and that probably overcomplicates the right. the experience. Um, but I mean, what what would you say about this game? Uh. It's, it gets muddled very easily. Uh, sometimes you'll forget what color you are and you'll be moving someone else's pawn. I, I also forget more often than not, which is funny because it's really not that big of a rule, but when you have your, your, your stack of tiles, you need to roll two adventurers in order to place this tile. Right. But then you have to roll whatever's on the tile to get in the thing. Right. So immediately I start, you know, like Dungeon Run or something. It's like when you decide to go this way, you place the tile and you move. This one, you place the tile like you're peeking in the door. Yes. And then you have to try to move. Right. And that and that's a big thing. So you have your deck. Every everyone to, to view the tile to, to actually place it. You have to roll two uh, running men, uh, and then that comes out. And then you have to pay to enter it, which in this case is the running man and the torch. So it's just yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot to try and remember. You know, uh, uh, and that's another thing with the curses. They don't actually say what the curse does, so you have to kind of look they it have up. A cheat sheet, but yeah, yeah it's... but you'd have to find the cheat sheet, and, and they're actually memorize it. Yeah, well, you'd have to memorize it, but who the hell memorizes the cheat sheet? 
No, one. you just kind of always look at it. But you're constantly racing against time, so you really do want to know what they all mean. Having said that, they they are fairly explanatory. It's just every once in a while you get one that's like, oh, what is that again? I yeah. don't remember at all. Because this one, you know, a dice is shattered. This one, a treasure chest is shattered. But you have to kind of look well, you know, kind of thing. So it's it's yeah. So yeah, I wish I could give it more of a glowing review. Um, it I is, do it think is fun. it's a fun idea. When, when we played it with a group of people, we had fun, even though. It was, but it was more like a frustrating fun, like oh, what's going on? Ah. Yeah, I would I would definitely say it's it's a frantic, frenzied fun when you have like four or more. Yes. Um, just playing the two of us like we just did a little while ago, it was a lot less fun. Yeah. Uh, especially because we're stupid and we, you know, more often than not, we'll start going the opposite ways. But sometimes it's out of necessity, but right. most of the time it's just because we're not paying attention to each other. And it's a lot of, ah, okay, so I got this, okay, ah, and I got that, ah, and that's pretty much what it is. So, so if you find that fun, if that seems fun, then they always kind of be just on the cusp of control... Right. It's just that, you know, as adult gamers, we kind of want some strategy or something, you know, some kind of... I mean, maybe even if we could just gather our thoughts in between and be like, okay, this time when we go out, since we 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 did the job and we uncovered all these rooms, this time we should probably go together and get to this room and make the most of it, you know, right. kind of thing. But there is no time for even that. I mean, of course, you could have house rules pretty easily, but yeah. it's just one of those things that it, it, the the... the the idea of the game is just to be this frantic, easy, dice-rolling game. And uh, it kind of leaves us wanting a little more, I think. Yeah, I agree with that. All right, so have I talked enough? Yes, you have. Is that enough? We, yeah. We, we, uh, we love these Kickstarter games. Of course, this was you know just re-released kind of thing on yeah. Kickstarter. But but we, we love to support these guys. It's just unfortunate that uh, you know this game's not for everybody. Oh, uh, real quickly, one of the last things that I wanted to say is more of a suggestion. You probably want to use like one of those Yahtzee cups. Um, to shake and then put down so that you can see because if you just roll sometimes it goes all over the place and you're left well there's spiraling. actually a curse that says if a dice rolls off the table and you have this curse then that dice is gone forever there's a curse that like makes you put your hand on stand your head up and put your hand or, on your... or stand up you know kind of the, yeah so so there is um yeah some some ridiculous party game curses out there as well but so yes you can have a lot of fun i'm just not sure that we are built for this game right all right, guys, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow our great playlist. Game Lab has been a lot of fun. Yes, it has. And please leave comments. We love comments. And you can help support us by buying our wares at spiderwolf.com. That's right. T-shirts, a card game, art prints, short stories, and more. And if you're on Facebook, so are we. So find us and friend us. And if I'm online, I will chat with you all day. And we're both blogging as well. You can find me, fisk37.tumblr.com. I'm blogging as characters, releasing character sheets, giving little bits of the world that I've created over 10 plus years. Uh, take a look. If you like it, share it. Support me that way. And mine is nicholasbach.tumblr.com where I have short stories and some poetry. So if you're interested, check that out. All right, guys. See you next time. We hope you escape. No. Next up is Justice League, the Flashpoint Paradox. I'm going to... Retroactively apologize for all the green screen crap that I had to deal with. There's a lot of green in this game that's very bright and close to bad green. So I'm sure I will not be able to remove all of it. I will try. I imagine it'll be so small that you won't even notice. Oh, what are you talking about, man? There's green all over the front of this box. When I show it, it's just going to be a big hole through my chest. It will have been, because this will be a blooper, if anything. So sorry. Retroactively isn't the word then. What would that be? The right word would be forward actively. That tells the opposite of retro. Well, it's retroactively in the you know context of how they are seeing this. Yeah, that's true. So for those of you who are watching and are very confused with what we're saying, essentially this blooper came before we actually did the video, but because we know that in the video... How are they confused about that? I don't know. I was confused. I get confused easy though, so yeah, you're right. Things probably should be facing me, so people can hear what I'm saying. They don't want to hear what I'm saying, most people don't. Why does that Nick guy ever shut up? It's yep, 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 yep. Yep, yep, yep. Nope. Escape the curse of the temple. The curse of the temple. Is that right? It sounds so weird when I say it. The curse of the temple. The curse of the temple. Escape 
the curse of the temple. On today's little review, it's Escape, the love the curse of the temple. Curse of the temple. On today's dual review, it's Escape, some bullshit subtitle. I'm RJ. And I'm Nick. Let's get to it. That was good. <laughs> I just made myself a liar. Because we did this out of order, so this is the last episode. And on the previous episode, I had said, oh, I think you're within five. Because I was kind of figuring that you would get this one. <laughs> but you didn't, so you're within seven. Ha 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 ha. I'm okay with that. <laughs> There you go. Well, yeah, you used to be like 27. So. Yeah, yeah. You had a gift from the gods. Yeah, your eye got broken. <laughs> you did well, though. So, even if I hadn't. 